The Second Amendment is under assault in the state of New Mexico, and the governor has lost her ever-loving mind. Stay tuned, hey, everybody. for the best meat you have ever eaten, check out samsbutchershop.com. Go and shop around. When you go to checkout, enter the promo code Triple T for a 5% discount. Check it out. Good morning, everybody. Trailer Trash Tim, thank you for joining me. I'm so glad you're here. How's your mom and them, by the way? Uh, I've had a few requests uh, for some folks are saying, we want to see Kiki. So I, I made a couple of short videos of Kiki that I'll attach at the end of the video so you can see what she is up to. Uh, if you will, real quick, give me a thumbs up on this video and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I'd love to have you come and be a part of the growing channel. All the relevant links are down below in the description where you can uh, uh, email, uh, buy me a coffee, all that jazz. We've got uh, Patreon coming up real soon and uh, some merchandise is in the works. So I'm excited about that. We have some really stupid politicians in the United States and among them are some uh, of our governors. And we've got one who has just absolutely lost her ever loving mind. I've been wanting to talk about this for a few days, but I've had other things I had to cover. But you may have heard about New Mexico Governor Michelle Grisham. This Einstein pulled a real unconstitutional stunt the other day that you may have already heard about. Some of you that are watching overseas, um, I don't know if you heard about this or not, but as you know, or as you probably know, in America, we are theoretically governed by the Constitution. Uh, however you feel about that, the Constitution is legally or technically the law of the land. Of course, nobody uh, in power... I shouldn't say nobody, but those who would deign to lord over us pay no attention to the Constitution. Democrats have been saying for several years, and I think this may have started with Al Gore, Mr. Climate Change, uh, who said one time that the Constitution is a living, breathing document, and it's not static. You don't need to take it literally or seriously. You know, I mean, it's got to change with the times, right? Well, that's not how it works, Al Gore. But a lot of Democrats believe that, that, you know, if, if times change, uh, then uh, we have to look at the Constitution uh, in a different manner to match the times. Well, that's not how it's supposed to go. And as you know, uh, we have in the Constitution a Second Amendment, which is given to Americans the right, listen carefully, not the privilege, the right to bear arms. Um, that is to say that every citizen of the United States, that would be us legals, uh, has a constitutional second amendment right to bear arms. We can have guns. Sorry for gun haters, but that's the law of the land. It's right there in the constitution. It made the second amendment. Anybody know what the first amendment is? The second amendment says we can bear arms. And there's a lot of Americans who do that very thing. Why? Well, it, the why doesn't really matter, uh, but it could be for self-defense. That's a legitimate reason, and that's enough of a reason. That's our right as Americans. We can bear arms. But the governor of New Mexico, Michelle Grisham, she doesn't see things that way. And so the other day, Michelle Grisham, these Democrats, folks, I'm telling you, they are absolute, utter, lunatics. They are children. They are emotional. They have brains, apparently, but they never use them. And so the good governor, the the caring, feeling governor of, of uh, New Mexico uh, issued a temporary ban where she, uh, she for suspended open and concealed carry on public property for the next 30 days. Now, of course, Michelle Grisham is not so much of an idiot that she thinks that this is constitutional or that it will it will withstand any court challenge. But she's going to do it anyway because, as we say, Democrats are all about symbolism over substance. It doesn't matter uh, if it makes sense. We've just got to do something because somebody with a gun, some bad person with a gun did something bad with a gun, so therefore we're going to punish everyone. It needs to be said what is so patently obvious to anybody who has a functioning brain. 
that law-abiding citizens who choose to open carry are a threat to nobody. Nobody. In other words, she is going to punish law-abiding citizens, even though they're a threat to no one, because a criminal did something wrong. Does that make any sense to anyone? You know, when I was in school, if you had a troublemaker in class, the teacher would remove the troublemaker and send them to the principal's office. She didn't send everybody to the principal's office because not everybody was being a troublemaker. She dealt or he dealt with the troublemaker, right? It's the person who's the rabble rouser. That's the one who gets in trouble, not the whole class. If the troublemaker was throwing her an eraser, she didn't send everybody to, to the principal's office, just the one who was throwing the erasers. But Michelle Grisham doesn't see things that way. Because somebody did something illegal or bad with a gun, she's going to punish everybody who owns a gun, even though law-abiding, legally carrying citizens did nothing to warrant any sort of punishment. So my question for you, I have several questions for you, Governor, if you're bright enough to answer them, but you issued a 30-day suspension of open and concealed carry. So the question is, well, what happens on the 31st day? Why didn't you issue your ban or uh, for for or your suspension for thirty one days? Aren't we going to return to utter chaos on the thirty first day? Why didn't you make it permanent? Why didn't you do it for a year? Why didn't you do it for five years? Why didn't you say for the next twenty years we can have no open or concealed carry? If it makes sense, why not make it permanent? Why just thirty days? No, we're just going to do it for thirty days and see how it goes. I guess. Well. <clears throat> the the point of the fact is, Governor, that we have the Second Amendment, and that, that applies to your state of New Mexico, and no one, no politician, no person in, author in a position of authority, and that includes you, Michelle, can legally cancel a constitutional right. That is not your authority. That is not your power. And she knows this. And should I remind the good governor or any politician that when you res when you assume office, you place your left hand on the Bible, you raise your right hand, and do you know what you swear to do? You swear, you give an oath, you give your word to do what? To uphold the Constitution. You vow to do that. You promise to do that. You say to your constituents, to your citizens, I am going to uphold the the Constitution. Now, she may not like the Second Amendment. Obviously, she doesn't, but that's irrelevant. The point of the matter is you have sworn an oath to uphold the Constitution, and just in, in the, in the uh, brush of an ink pen, you just broke your vow. You just broke your... I hate liars. I hate liars. How hard is it just to keep your word? You don't have to agree with the Constitution. On the other hand, why the hell would you run for office if you're not going to keep the Constitution, uphold the Constitution, keep your oath, do what you vowed you would do? Now, if you don't like it, then you can work to overturn it. Good luck with that, by the way. Another question for you, Governor Grisham. Who's really giving you problems in terms of concealed carry and open carry? Is, the law, is it the law-abiding citizens? Are they the ones giving you a problem? Do you really expect that a criminal is going to obey your order? Are you so thick in the skull that you actually believe that nonsense? It's not the law-abiding citizens, Governor, who are creating a problem for you. A law-abiding citizen who carries a weapon with them is a threat to no one. If I am surrounded by law-abiding citizens who are carrying a weapon, it doesn't bother me one bit because they're good, upstanding, law-abiding citizens, and they are in all likelihood carrying a weapon simply for self-defense and good on them. There's nothing wrong with that. It isn't law-abiding citizens, Governor, whom you are punishing that is your problem. It's the criminals. And if you... Watch your language, buddy. If you would deal with criminals harshly as you should, governor, it would solve the problem. Problem solved. 
It isn't the people who are obeying the law who are your problem. It's, it's an old saying, and it, it's been said a million times, but I'll say it anyway. When law... If, if uh, when guns are taken away from law-abiding citizens, all you're going to have are criminals left. Okay, it's as simple as that. The summation for Democrats is this: Democrats, for the most part, almost a hundred percent, they are emotional. They're not logical. They're not rational. They go by their feelings. They go by their feelers. Oh, we've got to do something. Well, actually, you don't have to do anything other than your job, of course. If you'd simply punish criminals, it would solve the problem. Democrats are just stupid. They are just stupid. They are emotional children. They're not mature. They don't use their brains. They use their emotions. They are governed by their emotions. You know what's happening here is the governor calls this a public health crisis. Got it? We're got, we got to set aside the Constitution because we have a public health crisis. No, you don't. You've got a criminal crisis. That's all you've got. And if you deal with the criminals as you should, it would solve the problem. You know, where we've heard this public health crisis nonsense before, right? We heard it with the big C. I don't want to say the word, but you know what I'm talking about, the big, big pandemic a year few years back. We had a public health crisis, so we had to suspend the Constitution. We never need to suspend the Constitution. We need to follow it. This is no public health crisis. It's a criminal crisis, and if you just deal with the criminals, problem solved. Now, the local sheriff, who has, who is uh, John Allen, and John Allen just happens to be a Democrat, believe it or not. By the way, even Democrats are telling uh, Governor Grisham, she can't do this. Looney Ted Lou of California says, eh, yeah, I don't think you can do that. But the sheriff says this, that he will not enforce the ban. Well, good for you, sheriff. In other words, we're not going to do it. Symbolism over substance, folks. Folks, the, sher the sheriff has enough brains left in his skull to realize you can't do this, Governor. This is unconstitutional. And the district attorney in the area also said he will not prosecute anybody who is found to be open or concealed carrying. Now listen to the words of uh, the Republican, the local Republican state Senator, Greg Baca. He said the order was the wrong response. Quote, a child is murdered. The perpetrator is still on the loose. And what does the governor do? She targets law abiding citizens. He's right about that. With an unconstitutional gun order. Charles C.W. Cook writes in the National Review, this is not how the law works in America. He goes on to write, as far as I can see, there's nothing in any New Mexico statute that gives the governor power to declare an emergency suspending the right to carry, and there's certainly nothing in the U.S. Constitution that does. If our elected officials were allowed to shelve our unalienable rights every time that they believed those rights were being abused by outlaws, then they wouldn't be in un unalienable rights. They'd be privileges, he wrote. There's a big difference between rights and privilege. The Constitutional Second Amendment is a right, not a privilege. It cannot be rescinded. Uh, Governor Grisham doesn't expect criminals to follow her illegal order, he writes, but she hopes that it will send a resounding message to the people who aren't criminals, and this in turn will create fewer risks on the street. What? Cook wrote. That, that right there is the practical problem with almost un, with almost every gun control measure that is ever, ever proposed in the United States. It's almost elegant in its futility, he writes. As data from Florida and Texas has shown, carriers are between six and seven more times to be more law-abiding than the police. Those people don't need to be sent a message because they aren't the problem in the first place, he noted. Now listen to this carefully. The problem, Cook adds, the only problem is the criminals, the very people whom Governor Grisham acknowledges will be unaffected by her order. What a mountain of tyrannical stupidity she has built. I expect it to be short-lived. No kidding. Of course, it'll be short-lived. There's enough...
people with a little bit of common sense who see what's going on here. You know what really bothers me about this, other than the obvious? You people in New Mexico, God bless those of you who are sympathetic to what I'm saying, who have enough common sense in your head to understand how stupid this is, how childish this is, how illegal this is, but there's enough of you in the arts and croissant crowd and Santa Fe who agree with the governor, who vote for nonsense like this. Oh, oh, it's just the right thing. Oh, we've got to do something. Pass more wine and cheese, please. Clock in, for heaven's sakes. Use your brains, you people in New Mexico. Join the rest of the citizens of the state who have enough common sense to realize how stupid this is. Can you not find anybody else with a little bit of common sense to run for governor? There you go. The governor of New Mexico, good old Governor Grisham. May she be run out of town on a rail ASAP. All right, here comes some footage from Kiki. Listen, give me your comments down below. Oh, we live in a land of idiots and fruits and nuts. Let me hear what you've got to say about Governor Grisham in the comments below. And here's some shots of Kiki. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I appreciate you being here. Have a great Tuesday, and I will see you tomorrow. Trailer Trash Tim, over and out. Kiki, what are you doing? Hey, hey, what are you doing? You want to say hello to everybody? You want to say hello? What are you doing? Are you being camera shy? Oh, now you're going to claw the deck. There you go. Claw that deck. What are you doing besides being silly and lazy? Hey, man. Why don't, you keep, why don't you quit filming me like that? What are you doing, anyway? All right. Say goodbye to everybody. Kiki, say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Kiki the cat. Everybody's wanting to see more Kiki. Well, a few people have asked to see a little more Kiki. There you go, Kiki. There you go, darling. You taking a nap? Am I bothering you? Kiki, you are the laziest cat ever. You're also getting a little fat. I'm going to have to put you on the carnivore diet. We'll check in with it later.